So in this video, we're going to be going over how to reduce a system's latency for users that are distributed across the world. We're going to take the example of a social media platform such as Instagram, which has metadata about posts as well as images that need to be served to users. So before we start talking about how to make this system low latency, let's first dive into what this system actually looks like at a bare bones level. So right off the bat, we have to have an API for this system, which is just our entry point where users can access it. So this API is what our users are going to reach out to, and that'll give them information about metadata and photos for their posts. To store the metadata, we're going to use a traditional database, which is going to store that type of data in a way that it can be queried later. And for our photos, we're going to use a blob store, which is going to allow us to store large objects such as photos and fetch them by some identifier. This is the crux of what our social media system is going to look like, and we're going to dive into those pieces and figure out how to make them lower latency. The problem starts to come in when we have users that are geographically distributed. So if our users are really close to the data center, this isn't too much of a problem. But if our data center is in, for example, Ohio, and we have users that are in New York and California, those users are going to have a long journey across the country to be able to reach out to our data center. If we're thinking about the traffic that's going to be going between our user and our data center, it's going to have to probably travel across multiple internet service providers with long running fiber optic cables that go between those two locations. And all of that infrastructure in the middle is going to introduce latency that'll make it slower for our users to actually access the data that they're looking for. The first thing we're going to do here is address where most of our traffic is going, and that's going to be to our blob store that's storing these photos. Right, those are larger files that are going to take up more bandwidth, and they're going to be more sensitive to problems along the path between the user and the data center. So what we can do here is instead of having a simple blob store that's being served by our API, is we can introduce a CDN, or Content Delivery Network. The CDN is going to consist of multiple points of presence, and each point of presence is going to be located in a location that's closer to a group of users. So for example, we might have one point of presence in New York and one point of presence in California. Whenever our users want to look up a photo from our platform, they're first going to reach out to their closest point of presence. So for example, our user in New York can reach out to the New York point of presence, and that location may or may not have the content that they're looking for already cached. If it does have that content cached, then this is great because our user can get their content super fast. If it doesn't, then it can proxy the request out to the main origin server in our core data center, and that's going to get that photo from our centralized blob store. So we still have one point where all of our data is located, and we can store caches of frequently used data at locations that are close to our users. If you want to learn more about how CDNs work at a lower level, you should check out our video on them in our Systems Fundamentals course on interviewpen.com. So we've now mostly addressed our latency problem for photos, but we still have these long distance requests going out to our data center for our API, which is serving metadata about posts. So let's consider what would happen if we actually moved our API to be in those points of presence as well. So we still have our three locations. We have our core data center, our New York location, and our California location. And our two edge locations in California and New York are going to contain both a CDN node and an API node. Remember, our API is stateless, so we don't have any real challenges with moving the API to be closer to the user. All the data that the API is getting is going to be from the database, so we can easily replicate the API with no repercussions. So while doing this does make the journey between the user and the API much faster and much lower latency, our API is still going to have to go out to our core data center to be able to get data from our database. So the data is actually traveling the same distance in this case. However, it's pretty likely that we'll end up with a lower latency connection between our edge location and our core data center than the user will have between them and our core data center. To take an extreme example, we could actually buy a dedicated fiber optic line between New York and wherever our core data center is located, and the only traffic going across that fiber optic line could be metadata between our API and our database. Of course, for most situations, this would be far too cost prohibitive, but there's lots of other solutions that enterprises will use to make sure that latency between two locations is small. So moving our API to be closer to our users doesn't actually change the distance that the data has to travel, but it does allow us to use more efficient transit methods for that data. We do have one potential problem with this, however, and that's that if our API is doing filtering of our data, we might have more bandwidth going between our API and our database than we would between our user and our API. So if we're going to take this approach, it's really important that we make sure to do most of that processing on the database itself or introduce another microservice in front of the database to do that processing so that we're not transmitting data all the way over this long distance that we're just going to filter out and not send to the user. 
So this solution can certainly help, but if we really want to make our latency as small as possible for our globally distributed users, we're going to need to move our database to be as close to the users as our API is. A naive example here would be to create read replicas in each of our points of presence. So now our API and our database replica are in the same region, and our user has a very short path to get to the API and thus to the database. For reads, this works really well, but we have this massive problem here where when we're writing to the database, our write is actually going to have to travel all the way from the read replica to the data center, and then it's going to have to travel out to every other edge location so that can be replicated to those as well. So we're introducing a consistency problem here where regions might not have up-to-date data, and we're introducing potentially huge amounts of additional latency on writes because all of the data written to the database has to go all the way to the core data center and then all the way back to other edge locations. Furthermore, our database might be very large. If we have tons of users, we might have tons of metadata about their posts, and it could certainly end up being cost prohibitive to replicate that in multiple regions, especially since these edge locations might be space or power constrained more than our core data center is. So instead of replicating all of the data to all of the regions, let's take a look at an example where we're only replicating important data. To do this, we can introduce a cache in each of our edge locations that'll store only frequently used data. We can do a similar model to our CDN, where when we're accessing our cache, it'll return the data if it already has it cached, and if it doesn't, it'll proxy the request to our main database. Assuming we can store data in our cache efficiently, we can cache only the most frequently used and most relevant data, and the majority of traffic will end up going to the cache, and our user can get that response right away. If the cache doesn't have the data we're looking for, it can fall back to going out to the database, which will of course increase latency. Of course, we now have the problem of coming up with an efficient algorithm that can enable us to cache frequently used data, while still making sure that we have up-to-date data without actually querying our database every time. Another benefit of this solution is that we can have different data cached in different edge locations. So for example, users in California might be accessing completely different content than users in New York. So we can cache the data that's most relevant to the users that this cache node is responsible for. Now, if we do have a strong correlation between where writes are made and where reads are coming from, we can actually do even better than this. So for example, if users that post in California are generally being viewed by an audience in California, we can simply store all of those posts in California and only in California, and the bulk of the users that are accessing that data will be able to access it very quickly. This concept is called geographic sharding. So when we send data to our database, it'll take a look at the location that the data is coming from, and it'll route it to one of many database shards in different locations. So if the data is near New York, it'll go to this New York database shard, and if the data is near California, it'll go to this California database shard. If we're writing and reading from New York, data is just going to go between this database shard and this API in the same region, and it's going to be very low latency. And if someone in New York does want to read or write something in California, they will have to go all the way out to that other point of presence in California, which will take a bit longer. Of course, this solution only works if we do have that strong correlation between read and write locations. In a lot of situations, we wouldn't have this, and content that's popular in one location would be popular in others as well, so it's probably better to use the caching solution in this case. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more content like this on interviewpen.com. We have tons of more in-depth system design and data structures and algorithms content for any skill level, along with a full coding environment and an AI teaching assistant. You can also join our Discord, where we're all always available to answer any questions you might have. If you or a friend wants to master the fundamentals of software engineering, check us out at interviewpen.com.